Let's talk about flying and how it just became an even bigger headache. It's the social distancing, the masks, the extra documents, and the hours of waiting. It's a nightmare for the industry too. I can't see international travel returning to anywhere near normality for a very long time. So is it safe to fly again? Who's going to pay for it? And how's the pandemic changed how we fly forever? Before the pandemic hit, the global travel industry was booming. Many saw it as a golden age of commercial air travel. Over the last 10 years, growth in the airline industry had skipped along nicely, more than 5% a year. On your journey, they're up in the air, we handle every hassle. Great with kids and seeds. A bunch of low-cost carriers joined the game, flying more people to more places. Starting from $130. It was a heyday. They had never had days like that. However, 2020 came. It was the worst kind of turbulence. Imagine seven and a half million flights canceled between January and July. People demanding their money back and no one booking. Thousands of planes grounded and fighting for parking spots. Now to put the losses in perspective, before COVID-19, the industry was looking forward to more than $870 billion in revenue for 2020. Now it's more like 419 billion, half of what the airlines took in last year. And next year doesn't look much better. Air traffic isn't expected to get anywhere near those pre-COVID days before 2023, and maybe not even before 2025. It's so bad that many airlines are turning to governments for multi-billion dollar bailouts. Thai Airways, Lufthansa, LATAM, they nearly went bust. Hong Kong's Cathay Pacific received a $5 billion bailout. Emirates, Etihad and Qatar Airways recently announced job losses and pay cuts of up to 50%. And those were just the airlines. Plane manufacturers are cutting jobs too. Boeing is aiming for 16,000. Airbus already cut 15,000. All three airlines, major airlines here in the United States have said they're going to come out of this and they're going to come out of this smaller. So that's going to lead to fewer jobs in the industry. It's not going to be like it was at its peak in 2019. And that's because people just aren't expected to fly as much as they used to. A lot of people have lost their jobs. Some are just afraid. Sure, some governments are lifting border restrictions and travel is starting to pick up again but not in the same way, not even close. It means the way we fly will have to change. And we've had to adapt before. Take 9-11, for instance. After the plane hijackings, airport screenings were tightened and locked cockpits became the industry standard. A passenger's attempt to hide a detonator in his shoe led to more travelers having to take off theirs. A few years later, the UK uncovered a terror plot that involved smuggling explosive liquids. It's one reason why the amount of liquids we can take on board is still restricted. And now the security threat is a virus. It's a new kind of threat that's making air travel weirder than ever. It was swarming with uh, staff who were there to assist the passengers on my flight, getting off the plane, going through all the checks again, making sure that you had all your paperwork. All of these people were in protective gear, basically hazmat suits. And here's more of what you can expect. Obligatory masks, temperature scans, longer check-in and security queues. And when you board the plane, you might even get handed a face shield or hand sanitizer. Crew are likely to wear nearly full protective gear, not to mention the fact that the entire aircraft will have been disinfected. From the moment you walk into the airplane, you're touching an enormous number of things. You're adjusting your airflow, you're putting on your seat belt, you're playing with the in-flight uh, entertainment system, you're touching your tray and whatnot. We want to make sure that all of those are properly sanitized and sanitized over and over on a regular basis. The industry is trying to build public confidence to attract more passengers, but it still has to convince all those people who believe that planes are just giant germ incubators. So we asked Boeing about that. There's an urban myth that air on an airplane is simply recirculated and it's the same air and you're catching the same germs that the other guy just emitted. That's not true. Here's why. 
air inside the cabin gets sucked through what are called HEPA filters. According to Boeing, they remove 99.9% of all bacteria and viruses, including ones the size of the coronavirus. The filtered air is then mixed with fresh air from outside and recirculates back into the cabin. And the air flows from the ceiling to the floor, meaning germs are harder to spread from passenger to passenger. It's actually safer to be in the cabin of an airplane than it is, say, in a crowded restaurant or uh, on public transportation or perhaps even in your car. So that's where things stand now. But more changes could be on the way. The UN's aviation body is suggesting things like prepackaged food, taking the bare minimum on board, stuff you can fit under your seat, and even restricting which bathrooms we can use. And then there's the seating. Social distancing should really apply here too, if possible. But some safety recommendations just cost the industry too much money, and they're unsustainable. Airlines like WestJet and Air Canada are already filling those middle seats. They can't afford not to. Others will pass those costs on to consumers. Social distancing on a plane costs money. So it's highly likely that the passengers will start to bear the brunt of the costs for keeping uh, flights safe and clean. Right now, though, some airlines are discounting tickets to attract customers. One website has reported price cuts of up to 40% for European package holidays. But few expect those low prices to last. And maybe that's a good thing. Look at Barcelona. Before the pandemic, it was getting swamped by tourists, and locals were pushing back. Even the most remote places have been overrun. Mount Everest even had a traffic jam. You have a huge garbage problem, you have a huge crowding problem, and you have a problem of the destruction of the environment and the culture. That's just what happens when you have hyper-tourism especially when tickets are cheap. We have gotten so used to what in the industry is called drive-by tourism. Fly somewhere. And welcome to Paris. Stay at an inexpensive hotel, get on buses, go see the Eiffel Tower, go see the pyramids outside of Cairo, come back. A lot of airlines are now focused on restarting flights to only their most profitable destinations. Canadian Airlines, for instance, scrapped 30 domestic routes. And that means fewer options and more expensive tickets. Flying just became that much more exclusive. I felt fortunate to get on board that flight. A lot of people around the world uh, are trying to get back to various countries, aren't they? Where they live, where they work, where their family members may be. And not many are being able to achieve that. I think you're going to appreciate, it's going to require you to not be so glib about just getting on an airplane. The airline industry has come in for a hard landing. It's going to have to adapt to survive. And us, well, we're just going to have to adapt. If you're new to our show, I'm glad you found us. Start Here is an online series that unpicks the news. We've got new episodes every week explaining the big stories, like the war in Yemen or what Israel is doing in the West Bank. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Al Jazeera wherever you're watching this video, and I'll see you next week.